So, so let's uh, let's just take a little step backwards because I would love. I know you have a story to share yeah, about yeah. a little a little guy um, that was part of the meningitis yes. series. Yeah, little M Mackenzie. Um, this is what I love about kids. You know that you you are thinking that they are thinking this way, and sometimes they're thinking that way, <laughs> and <laughs> they surprise you. You know, and and he. He's a little boy who came down from far north Queensland who um, had meningitis when he was small and he'd lost um, all of his fingers mm -hmm. and um, most of his toes. Uh, and he came in the day before the shoot to say hello and everything and I was watching him. He came in with his dad and uh, he was obviously self-conscious about his toes and, and he had, um, you know, those sandals that you know you can do undo and do up with velcro mm -hmm. and he was sitting there he, he started with his hands behind his back and you know and it was just kind of really quiet and he kept undoing the velcro and doing it up and so he, he was obviously self-conscious to a certain extent mm -hmm. and so that's why it's good to have them feel a little bit more comfortable you know know what they're coming to the next day so it's not a photographic studio it's just right. a place where Anne is you know, and that's that's the way you want it to, um, that you want them to feel. So anyway, he comes in the next day, and um, you know, there's a, sometimes there's a lot of people on set, and uh, which doesn't really matter with little babies because, and particularly newborns because they're not aware. Um, but you know, with a, an, ol an older child, um, he was like seven or eight. Um, you know, they 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 can be self-conscious and, and all of these people. And so we got him on set and he was sitting up on this um, box and I got right close to him and I said, now, okay, Mackie, just don't even think about all these people in the room, just ignore them, right? And you and I, we're gonna make a great photograph. And he looks at me and he says, I'm going to do a yoga pose and I was like, oh, he was, <laughs> okay. So he was basically saying, you get back to your camera and I've got this sorted, right? <laughs> so next minute he sits up and he does the lotus position, right? And on this box, and he, from a little boy who was self-conscious the day before, he's put, he put everything that had damaged him in front, right? With his fingers and his toes right in front and he did the lotus position and he stared into the camera. Um, and I know you have six books, uh, coffee table books it's coming it's out, it's now, yeah, right? Yeah. And you have another one coming out early in, in 2017. Yes, there's a, a Tashin um, are doing uh, a new book uh, with me and it's going to do, the working title at the moment is Small World, which I think will stay, I think it's nice. And I have spent the last year going through all of my archives um, with my daughter Stephanie who's also mm -hmm. my producer and uh, we had everything brought over to New York where we're living now and, and in art storage and, and so we spent months and months going through all these old images and I've been posting some of them on Instagram oh look what I found you know I f forgot all about this and so on but you know if I'm talking to all the photographers here Tashin said to me well, you know, I said, how many images do you need? And they're like, oh, you know, about 1,200. Uh, <laughs> to have 240 in the book. Um, and I was like, okay. So it made me a bit nervous. So I had a few sleepless nights. Oh my God, do I have 1,200 images that, wow. that they will think would, right. it would fit? And, but it was a great process. And, and, but it just goes to show that, you know, you can't be an overnight success. You have to have a whole lot of bankable images to in order to be doing something like this and so this Tashin book is going to be great because there's some uh, um, some of the old classic images and um, some different takes on some of the images that people may know but they you know see a little bit more about mm -hmm. and some images uh, that have never been seen before you know the, there's a saying that goes around quite commonly, um, oh, well, everyone's a photographer these days. You hear that a lot? Um, no. My take on it is everyone 
can take photographs these days, but not everyone's a photographer. And being a photographer is a whole new level of responsibility. It's about, it's about um, honing your craft. It's about knowing your subject matter. It's about preparation. Um, there's, there's so much that goes into my images before I even step into a studio. Let's and talk about that a little bit. I, oh. I know we talked a moment ago about research, how much research went into... Um, I should see my files on my computer of images from under the sea. You know, it's, you have to be interested in your subject matter. You have to really find it fascinating and beautiful and um, to involve yourself in that world, you know, to, to want to tell your own story. And that's what you do. I'm a storyteller right? um, and a photographer, but that's, that's the way I see myself. But, you know, you look at some of my images now, if people are watching you, go, go revisit uh, Under the Sea and look at the detail there. Um, it's, you know, all of the backgrounds have been um, hand-painted specifically for that image. And wow. one, of my, one of my favorite quotes by Picasso is, inspiration exists, it, but it has to find you working. Oh, totally. And so you have to be active and, yep. and doing things. Yes, uh, in yes. Order to, to Whatever find it is, just one step in front of the other, go start doing something, um, and then, you know, the paths will open up to you. That's, that's really, really important. I love that.